basically every day in class I record one class of notes and then I turn that into a YouTube video and then I'll link it in this which is our class app which you're gonna have in Google Classroom so if you're ever absent and you come to me and you're like miss what do I need to do I'm gonna say go to the class app and watch the recording from the day you were absent and you'll be able to see absolutely everything we did just like you were in this room okay so in your left-hand column you have written what I have written down on the, the screen plasma membrane aka phospholipid bilayer all right in the right hand column I want you to put transmembrane proteins they span the membrane they help cell interact with environment so yesterday in our notes we drew if you if you were following along we drew a really simple phospholipid bilayer when we talked about those phospholipids um, today good friday morning Lord teachers and students please rise for oh. the pledge of allegiance i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all honor the texas flag i pledge allegiance to the texas one state under god one and indivisible. Please honor a brief moment of silence. Thank you. You may be seated. Pirates, it's Friday. You've made it through your first week of school and it's been While he's great. talking, you can draw what I just drew. A couple of reminders. There is no after school meal on Fridays. At dismissal at 4 o'clock, please ensure that you exit in the back if you're a car rider or front if you are a bus rider. Our varsity football team is taking on Kennedale this evening in Kennedale at 7.30 p.m. Go out to support your Pirates uh, in Kennedale. Tickets can be purchased online. Students, a reminder that parking permits must be purchased by September 1st. We will be ticketing cars by September 1st. To get a permit, please go to our website. There's an online application. It does require a $10 payment online, as well as a current driver's license, not a permit, as well as current insurance. Students, we've been focused on phones this week. You've done a tremendous job complying with our policy. Next week, I want you to be aware that our tardy policy and our dress code policy will be enforced in full force. So you may ask yourself, maybe you're a new freshman, what does that look like? We do not send folks to ISS. To As he's talking, you can continue to write what I've written will here. Be spending more time at school. So, uh, I understand that things happen. This is a big school. The, ha the hallways sometimes are crowded. Uh, we allow you up to five tardies per week. But, ladies and gentlemen, once you reach that sixth tardy, you will be assigned to Saturday school from 9 to noon. Don't get caught at Saturday school over tardies. We increased our passing period by one minute. I read the surveys that you submitted and said you said four minutes was not enough time. Five minutes, I observed the first three days of school is enough time to be to class on time. Teachers will be shutting the door when the passing period is over. Dress code, two dress code violations in a week. You'll also find yourself at Saturday school. Please over the weekend, Familiarize yourself with our dress code. It is posted in the hallways as well as on our website. Again, thank you for a great first week of school. Teachers, please make sure that you show the principal's message during fourth period. I will be emailing you with that video link, but please ensure during that long period that you show the principal's message. Also, teachers' grades will be checked next week. This is a very short six weeks. I know that Gradebook just opened yesterday. However, please take some time to ensure that grades are updated and students know their grade status. Last of all, uh, today, teachers, is the last day for the Education Foundation Drive. We're currently at about 53% Fish to five while we talk, so we can we move on? Foundation. If you would like to support our Education Foundation, please see Maria Gramella in the counselor's office. We'd love to be at 100%. The Education Foundation does great things for our district. That is all for today's announcements. I hope everybody has a great school day and weekend. Thank you. All right, you don't have to write anything here. We wrote it on the last slide. Um, but this, this is, what do you think this is from? 
Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, and it, it's framed in such a way that you've got like three or four different charts of this, and it asks you which one shows the function of proteins in the phospholipid bilayer, and they control materials that enter and exit the cell. So they don't convert ATV, they don't catalyze proteins, and they don't receive signals from DNA replication. Yes, ma'am? Was that just someone at the door? Yeah, they just came. Oh, they're doing door checks, aren't they? All right. Now, new heading, left-hand column. You're going to put cell structure. Left-hand column, you're going to put cell structure. So cells have a ton of organelles. We're not going to hit every single one of them today. Um, we'll be spiraling back to cells all year long. Um, the one I, I do want you to know, so now you're in the right-hand column, you're going to write the word nucleus. Beside the word nucleus, put a little dash or a semicolon or a colon. And I want you to put that they're a eukaryote. Do you all remember yesterday, you what? Do. You do, okay? So what do eukaryotes have? Nucleus. A nucleus. And their di genetic material, their DNA, is inside of that nucleus. So I want you to put contains genetic information. It is the brain of the cell. And again, you can remember, U equals do. Fist to five, how we doing? couple people writing that's fine the bottom says brain of the cell so nucleus is a Cell structure nucleus, that means they're a eukaryote, because you do, contains the net genetic information, and that's the brain of the cell. All right, moving on. Still under cell structure. This time you're just going to write cytoplasm. Put a, a dash or a colon beside it. I want you to know that it's composed of water, salt, and sugar. And guys, you can just remember that in the cell, this is like the goo that everything floats around in. No, we've got two more um, organelles we're going to talk about. We're done with organelles then. Now, let's talk about prokaryotes. So pro rhymes with what? No. So they don't have membrane-bound organelles. So where is the DNA in those prokaryotes? Uh, it's it, in, the yeah, it's just in this goo. It's in this cytoplasm. So cytoplasm composed of water, salts, and sugars. It's the goo. And you can put pro-no DNA here. Fist five. Good, awesome. Y'all are rock stars. All right, next one. Mighty, mighty mitochondria. I think this is like the one organelle that everybody knows, right? So um, we're still under that topic. And on your right-hand side, you're going to write mitochondria. It's the powerhouse of the cell. Um, funny thing about mitochondria, it has its own DNA. And that's inherited only from your mom. And the important thing to know about your mitochondria is that it is going to, let's just write this out, it makes energy. Mitochondria makes energy. Yeah, I have a question.
question for you. Do we have to post it right at 1025 or could we do it slightly before? Okay, awesome. That's perfect. All right, thank you. Sorry, I know that just went away, but I got to do attendance and I'll, I'll put it back up. Julie, Here. Terrence, Here. Leah, Here. Joel, Here. Camilla, Here. Maya, Here. Ryan, Here. Naima, Here. Alex, Here. Alexander or Alex, which one do you prefer to go by King? Um, Xander. Xander, oh that's right. Jasmine, not he, oh, I can't even choose that. Um, another Alexander, Here. Jacob, Here. Cadence, Here. my Alex, Here. Kareem, Chanel. Here. All right, so if you're on your organelle slide. It's a white screen. There we go. You just wrote powerhouse of the cell has its own DNA and it makes energy. Fist of five on if you're done with that. Awesome. Last organelle we're going to talk about today. Um, this is cilia and flagella. And the reason I'm going to talk about it is because several images you're going to encounter on your unit test are going to have cilia and flagella on them. And I just want you to know that their structures used for motion and transport of materials. Structures used for motion and transport of materials. Now I need you to know that both oh my word both pro and you can have them. So a prokaryotic cell could have flagella, a eukaryotic cell could have flagella. It's one thing they have in common. As we're finishing up writing this, I want to review one more thing from yesterday. Do y'all remember clipping? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah? So I'm going to say clipping, and then as a class, I want you to say cho cho chon chomp. But before we do it, y'all tell me those crazy letters we're saying, like Cho, what does that even mean? What does that stand for? Carb and so those are the elements in that biomolecule. So clipin, C-L-P-N, that's carb, protein, lipid, and nucleic acid. Thumbs up if you understand. All right, so I say clipin, you say? That was weak. I say clipin, you say? One more time. I say clipping, you say? Perfect. Are, are we good here? Yeah? All right. You don't have to write anything here right, yet, right now. But we, we learned about those levels of organization yesterday, right? So if these are the levels of organization, how do cells interact to form tissues with make which make organs, and then those organs make systems, and then those systems make organisms. They have to be able to talk to each other, right, in order to organize themselves, okay? So one thing I would maybe like for you to take like one line of your C-notes, and you can go all the way from the question column to the right-hand side, and just write this out in order. So it would go, cells, is that too low or can y'all see it? Tissue, organ, organ system, and I'm going to abbreviate there, and then organism. If we're talking about our whole body, what part of that are we? Organism. Yeah, we'd be the organism, right? Now, we have all those other levels in us, don't we? In us are systems, in us are organs, in us are tissues, in us are cells. When we put it all together, that's us. 
cell tissue organ, organ system, organism. Fist to five. Awesome. All right, new heading, new ink, left-hand column. You're going to put movement of materials through membrane. That's your heading. Movement of materials through membrane. So we've got two types. We've got passive transport. And underneath passive transport, you have diffusion and osmosis. So that's my type one. Passive transport can be diffusion or osmosis. And then we have active transport. Active transport requires ATP. ATP is energy so movement of materials through a cell membrane there's two types the first type is passive and the examples of that would be osmosis and diffusion the second type is active that requires ATP that stands for adenosine triphosphate we'll learn about that later and that is a form of energy energy two types there's passive which could be diffusion or osmosis there's active but that one requires ATP which is energy this to five on this we are, we are so close to being done, guys. When you're done, show me you're done by standing up. And we're gonna do a quick brain break. Uh, find a partner. May I use you as my partner? All right, so you're going to do what I call toe taps. So we're going to tap alternating feet four times. So one, two. All right, so let's move on now. We're going to look specifically at passive transport. This is not a new heading, okay? But you do want to write... Under your heading, you do want to write passive transport because we're talking specifically about it now. So it does not require energy. It moves from high to low. Does not require energy. It moves from high to low. <laughs> Fist five. Awesome. So we're still talking about passive transport. So Molecules are constantly in motion and collide with each other. One example of passive transport is diffusion. So guys, what you see on my screen right now, uh, we have maybe like three slides. Can you wait till we're done? So I don't want you to miss them. It won't be crazy long. 
That's fine with me. That's a compromise. Somebody want to help her so she could go? Thank you, friend. All right, so the picture you see, the pass is hanging up on our student center. It's on a lanyard. This is an example of diffusion. You don't have to draw it. But you know when you talk about like, okay, think about dropping food coloring in water, right? Have we all seen that? So that drop starts out real dark in one spot. What happens to that color over time? Yeah, it, that color just spreads out. Yes, ma'am, you do write that. That's diffusion. Did you have to do anything to that mixture for that to happen? No. Now, I could have sped it up by stirring it, right? But I don't have to do that. It will eventually do, its, do it on its own. So no energy was required for that to happen. So diffusion is just a solute, a molecule, something just naturally spreading out to fill that container. Fist of five, how we doing? You need five minutes, Xander? Okay, you're done. All right. Okay, so that's diffusion. Let's talk about osmosis. So osmosis is a little more complicated. We're, we're still under passive transport. So this is the diffusion of water molecules, but it's across a semi-permeable -perme membrane. And it's going to do this until the concentrations are equal. So diffusion of water across a semi-permeable membrane until the concentrations are equal. Diffusion of water across a semi-permeable membrane until the concentrations are equal. So this is similar to that last drawing, but do you see now there's, there's like something put down the center of that beaker? So now it's not just those substances just spreading out. Now they're try both sides are trying to become equal to one another. It's a lot like math, right? If, you, if you're in algebra, um, you've looked at equations where everything on one side has to equal everything on the other side. Have you ever heard a math teacher say that? Yeah? So... Osmosis is similar. Xander, could you get the door for me? These things just want to equal one another. They want balance. There's actually a fancy word for that, for things to be balanced. Homeostasis. It is a form of equilibrium. In your notes, just go ahead and put the word homeostasis. It's where things want to be balanced. Fist to five. It's fine. Osmosis, the water is moving and it's trying to get both sides equal. All right, we're about to move on. We ready? No? All right, moving on. There are three possible things that can happen in osmosis. So you're still under osmosis. An isotonic solution is where the concentration of solutes is the same inside and outside the cell. Concentration of solutes the same inside and outside the cell. So if you look at the picture of the beaker here, the water it's in is 10% salt. How much 
salt is inside of that model cell. This is the model cell right here. How much is inside of it and how much is outside of it? Now look at the board. That's 10 on both, right? Because they're equal, this is isotonic. So in your notes, I want you to put under isotonic, water moves both ways. The cell's not going to shrink or grow because these solutions are already equal to one another. Common mistake, yeah. We're not adding anything. We're just looking to see if they're the same. Fist to five, how we doing? I got a one. Let's hang tight a second. Okay. So we're still talking about osmosis. This time, we're going to look at hypertonic. So the solution is a higher concentration than the cell. So look at my drawing. My cell's that kind of red circle. Outside of my cell, how much salt is there? 20%. Inside my cell, how much salt is there? 10%. So if these are trying to be equal and it's water that's moving, the water in the cell is going to move outwards to try to put more water on the outside until they become equal. So here you're going to put water moves, wrong writing utensil, water moves out of the cell. In this case, the cell would shrink because the water in it's moving out so that cell's going to get smaller. Fist five. I think we only have like two slides left. All right, the next one is hypotonic. Solution, lower solute than the cell. Solution, lower solute than the cell. So because of that, water's going to move into the cell. So now what is this cell going to do? The last one shrunk. What's this one going to do? It's going to get bigger. So cell gets, let's say swole. Fist five. All right, let's look at how the state of Texas may question you over this concept. Oh, no, just kidding. One more thing. All right, so you, in your notes, we talked about active. I just, you don't have to write anything here. Actually, yeah, you do. So you're going to put in your left-hand column active transport. Left-hand column, active transport. Right-hand column requires energy, ATP. What's that? This last one? Uh, there's one more after this, but you don't write on the last one. Adenosine triphosphate. So here's how I remember that active transport requires ATP, guys. What letter do both of those start with? An A. So if you get an image like this and they ask you if you are looking at active or passive transport, 
Anytime you see them put ATP on it, what's it going to be? Going to be active, okay? So if I find that A, then that is active. If I don't find that A, then I'm probably looking at diffusion or osmosis. How can you tell if it's diffusion or osmosis? So diffusion, there's no barrier. There's no membrane. It's just like I drop some food coloring in water. That's diffusion. Osmosis, there'll always be a barrier or like a, uh, a little bag, which is what we're going to look at here in a second. All right. Now, if, yeah, this is the last one. So this is an actual example question. I'm going to read it to you. So follow along. You're done writing. Put all your notes together, but don't put them up yet. Just get them all out for the last three days. So it says, students investigate osmosis using dialysis tubing. So those little bags, that's what those are. Dialysis tubing is a semi-permeable membrane that allows water mo molecules to pass through while preventing salt icon ions from passing through. The students follow this procedure. Mix salt into the water to make a 7.1 salt solution. So my solution is... 7.1% solution. Add equal amounts of salt water solution into the four bags. So that's what's in those bags, the 7.1. Fill four beakers with different solutions of salt as shown in the image. So I've got one that's 5.4. I've got one that's 7.1, 9.3, and 11.2. Drop the bags in there and then watch what happens. So this is exactly what we just took notes over. If they're equal, the bag's not going to grow or shrink, is it? If they are hypotonic, the bag is going to grow. If they're hypertonic, the bag is going to shrink. So it says which beaker will osmosis cause the bag to expand? So expand means what? grow it's going to get bigger so this first one y'all may want to stand up because it's at the bottom there's no way you're going to see this so the first one is 5.4 solution so there's less salt outside than there is inside what's that bag going to do shrink. it's going to shrink the second one at 7.1 they're equal what's that bag going to do Stay. nothing right the third one is 9.3, that one's going to get bigger, and then the fourth one is 11.2. Hang on now. Hang on now. Stoli sees an issue. So, what I've been using for your notes is not mine. It's something I inherited from someone else. And I'm wondering if we've labeled something wrong. We're going to find out. So we said solution has more solute. Oh, okay. So no, we don't have an error. We said it wrong. So there's more solute outside than there is inside. Water's going to move out and it will shrink. So the two that are going to shrink here are actually the last two. You see the numbers on the outside are bigger than 7.1. Uh -huh. Okay. So the one that's going to get bigger is actually the first one, right? Uh -huh. Because... In the first one, there's more solute in the bag than outside. So in that one, water's going to move in, 
And when it moves in, what's that bag going to do? Big. Okay. So I'm just going to be honest with you. This is a very common problem when dealing with osmosis. So we get ourselves confused and we think about that movement the wrong way. We've got to think about the water moving, not the salt moving. So I think it's really good that we went over this question because we all made that mistake the first time. We said that first bag was going to grow or going to shrink when really it's going to, it's going to grow. All right, so here's what I want you all to do. Your Cornell notes, um, there are staplers in the room. There's one at that lab table, these two back here, and there's one here. Staple those notes together and put them in the front pocket of your journal. And then I'm going to come by with your post-it for your exit ticket for the day. <laughs>